Current estimates for the amount of animals that we kill and slaughter every single year around the world is about 92 billion animals on the land and then about 2 or 3 trillion aquatic animals like fish and other things. And it takes a staggering amount of resources to sustain all these animals every single year. You have to breathe them all into existence, and feed them, give them water, make land for them. It takes a tremendous amount of resources. Humanity has invested so much into animal agriculture. But have we really received anything worth it in return? What if the entire planet stopped consuming and producing animals on these farms altogether? What if we stopped eating animals? What effects on the world would this have? Let's take a look. Estimates show that 80% of all arable land on Earth is used for meat, dairy, and egg production, whereas only 20% of arable land is used for all human plant-based production. Animal agriculture is by far the biggest cause of deforestation. 80% of new deforestation in the Amazon rainforest is due to cattle ranching. In a world where plant-based diets are the norm and animal farming is obsolete, Vast swaths of land, once used for raising animals, are now reforested, contributing to thriving ecosystems and healthier air. Studies show if everybody went vegan, we'd save 77% more land, and we'd still be able to feed the entire world's population calorie-wise. In a vegan world, climate change becomes much more manageable, thanks to the significant reduction in emissions from agriculture. Animal agriculture alone is responsible for up to 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions. This includes methane from livestock and manure management. Trees and soil can store carbon, but cutting down trees to make way for grazing lands or crop fields for the animals releases all that stored carbon. If we were to stop all animal farming, global greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced by 28% when accounting for land use savings and carbon sequestration from reforestation. Nearly one third of climate change is tackled by a simple dietary change. But this is just the surface of environmental benefits. According to recent studies, vegans use only 46% of the water that their meat eating counterparts use. It takes about 15,000 liters, or approximately 4,000 gallons, of water to produce just one kilogram, or 2.2 pounds of beef. If the entire world were to go vegan, humanity would save about 33% more fresh water, with some estimates of up to 50% of all water savings are included. Animal agriculture also generates huge amounts of animal waste manure and fertilizer runoff that goes out into rivers and lakes and oceans. And this fosters algae blooms due to nutrient overload. Bacteria eat up the oxygen in the water, contributing to dead zones, killing off fish and coral reefs. Plant-based diets can greatly reduce this eutrophication and lead to healthier waters and thriving fish populations. Humanity would also get a huge health boost. 75% of Americans are obese or overweight. In a vegan world, the average BMI would lower to a much healthier level. Vegan diets are typically lower in sodium, but rich in potassium and other minerals. This combined with the lower BMIs, it would lead to a 75% reduced risk of developing high blood pressure compared to those who eat meat. Heart disease is the number one cause of death worldwide. Studies show vegans have a whopping 32% lower rate of heart disease. Plant-based diets, especially those rich in fruits and vegetables, have been linked to lower risks of various types of cancer, including colon, breast, and prostate cancers. Many studies suggest a 15% lower risk of cancer overall in vegans. The high fiber content, along with the antioxidants and phytochemicals found in plant foods, helps protect against the development of cancer. A diet high in fiber and low in saturated fats can also help regulate blood sugar levels and improve insulin sensitivity. 
One study found that vegans had a 50% lower risk of type 2 diabetes compared to non-vegans. These are just some of the diet-related diseases, but if the world were vegan, we'd also see a reduction in bacterial diseases. Bacterial outbreaks, i.e. Salmonella and E. coli, are largely caused by animal farming as manure runoff contaminates water sources and crops. Many of the world's most deadly viruses and pandemics, such as COVID-19, SARS, MERS, the bird flu, swine flu, they all originated from the consumption or farming of animals. Scarier, by 2050, antibiotic resistance is projected to kill more people than even cancer. Over 70% of the world's antibiotics are used in animal agriculture to prevent disease in factory farmed animals. This contributes to the growing crisis of antibiotic resistant superbugs, where antibiotics become less effective in treating bacterial infections. Plant based diets would virtually fix this growing concern and lead to a much healthier global population. With a healthy environment and population comes a healthier economy. Currently, Global healthcare systems are strained by dietary related diseases. But in a plant based world where these diseases occur much less in the population, a huge weight will be lifted from global healthcare systems. The American Diabetes Association estimates that diabetes alone costs the US around $327 billion per year. Since vegan diets reduce the risk of diabetes, Transitioning to a plant-based society could dramatically lower these costs. The U.S. also spends around $15.6 billion a year to treat illnesses from foodborne pathogens, many of which are associated with animal agriculture. But in a vegan world, the economic savings add up. The World Bank estimates that the global cost of climate-related damages could reach $2 trillion per year by 2030 if current trends continue. Veganism would help reduce these costs by lowering emissions and mitigating climate risks like extreme weather events. A study by Oxford University found that a global transition to vegan diets could save up to $1 trillion per year in healthcare, environmental, and food production costs by 2050. That's $30 trillion saved globally by 2050. Currently, the meat and dairy industries receive billions of dollars in subsidies every year. According to the Environmental Working Group, between 1995 and 2017, U.S. taxpayers spent over $35 billion in direct payments to livestock producers. In a vegan world, this money could instead be used for sustainable infrastructure, education, and healthcare. And the adoption of a plant-based diet could do more than save money. According to a report by Bloomberg Intelligence, the plant-based food market could grow to $162 billion by 2030. That's up from $29 billion in 2020. The rise of new plant-based industries and markets would bolster the economy and spark technological innovations to create more sustainable ways to grow and produce food, even though many plant-based staple foods like grains and legumes are already the cheapest foods on the planet. Animal farmers would transition to plant-based agriculture and other ventures that in time would create more jobs. In rural areas, renewable energy projects such as solar or wind farms could provide new income streams for farmers and help offset the loss of income from livestock farming. In some parts of the US, farmers have diversified into renewable energy by leasing their land for solar panel installations or wind turbines, creating a steady stream of income. In the European Union, various subsidies are available for farmers who adopt more sustainable organic farming practices, and similar initiatives could support farmers transitioning away from livestock farming. This selfless shift towards a vegan world for the animals can also foster greater compassion for our fellow humans. As we acknowledge the oppression and discrimination that we once treated animals with, Issues of oppression and discrimination and inequality in our human societies will be more urgently tackled. Who would have thought respect for the animals translates to respect for each other? The Link Hypothesis, researched by organizations like the National Link Coalition, 
demonstrates a correlation between animal cruelty and human violence. They've shown that people who commit acts of animal cruelty are more likely to commit crimes against humans, suggesting that societies less violent towards animals could see reduced violence and crime overall. Veganism also challenges the notion of speciesism, the idea that humans are inherently superior to other animals. But by recognizing the morally relevant difference between us and the animals is virtually non-existent, and by better understanding the experience of animals is very much like ours, we in turn will deal with other people more kindly. A study published in Appetite found that individuals who dehumanize animals are also more likely to dehumanize marginalized groups. Dr. A. Breeze Harper, in her work Sista Vegan, highlights how animal exploitation intersects with the oppression of people of color and women. A world that embraces veganism is likely to challenge any oppressive systems, promoting equality and justice across the board. A vegan world could help dismantle these harmful gender norms. In a study by Adams and Donovan in 1996, the association between meat eating and masculinity was explored, showing that reducing the link between masculinity and meat consumption can promote gender equality. As more men embrace plant-based diets, it challenges traditional gender roles and encourages men to reject societal pressures to conform to hyper-masculine ideals which often exclude compassion. This shift could promote greater gender equality by challenging societal expectations about masculinity and femininity. Studies have also shown that speciesism is linked to sexism and the dehumanization of women. Research published in Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin in 2012 found that when people viewed animal rights campaigns featuring sexualized images of women, they dehumanized the women more and were less likely to support the animal rights movement. This connection underscores how animal exploitation and the objectification of women are intertwined. Reducing speciesism could lead to improved gender relations by closing the perceived gap between humans and animals. The animal farming industry often exploits marginalized communities particularly in low-wage sectors like factory farming and slaughterhouses. Workers in these industries face harsh conditions, including low pay, dangerous work environments, and health risks. A vegan world would help reduce this exploitation by shifting to more ethical and safer industries. In the U.S., communities of color are disproportionately affected by factory farm pollution. Studies have shown that air and water pollution from livestock farming leads to higher rates of respiratory diseases, water contamination, in nearby communities. The vegan world would dramatically reduce this disparity. Redirecting the resources currently used for livestock feed could also provide more plant-based food for human consumption. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, estimates that eliminating animal agriculture could provide enough calories to feed an additional 4 billion people globally, helping to eradicate hunger. This would create a more compassionate, sustainable, and equitable world for all. This is what a vegan world could look like. So I think the argument's clear that uh, if the world transitioned over to a plant-based diet, the world would see tremendous benefits in almost every single way imaginable, from the environment to our health to socioeconomics, every single way imaginable. And this is not even counting all the ethical implications, all the ethical benefits to going vegan. So even if you don't care about the animals, even if you, you say, oh, I don't care about cows, I don't care about pigs, there is a clear, very stark argument to be made here that Yes, the world should be transitioning over to plant-based foods and diets. And uh, what we're doing is not sustainable. It is not beneficial in almost any way sustaining what we're doing today. So it turns out that this is not a coincidence. It turns out that when you make these ethical investments in others and the animals, when we treat animals better, and we, when we're mindful of what we're doing to them, all of that return comes back to us. And we see benefits in our human world, in our human societies, in almost every way. It's not a coincidence. Okay.
the foundations of veganism are rooted deeply in human culture, right? Treating others better, right? That makes the world, makes our society a better place. It's every single time. And that's why we're here today over these three million to four million years we've been here as humans. It's because we've made these ethical investments over time. We've listened to each other and made moral progress. So when we listen to the animals, we will also make more progress. And this is why I almost rarely talk about these benefits in these ethical debates about veganism, because I keep these as ammo. I, I, I load these up in my arsenal. I keep them for another time. Or when somebody just says they don't care about the animals. Well, we have all this here. So there is no excuse. We must transition to a plant-based world.